welcome. It's that time once again, the Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. A beautiful Tuesday morning here in the Valley of the Sun. And we're getting ready to head up to the front range, going to the mothership at KHNC. Wendy and I will be there Saturday. Yay! Yay! Right, we got it all. The the event's posted on the website, okay. so if you don't know where it is, I think Ramon even put a link for directions. I mean, we're right. getting fancy here. Right, you got to come. You have it's going to be come. a great time. So y- yesterday, Wendy and I, we, we boxed up what, all the giveaways. We may be doing a giveaway like every 10 minutes. I don't know. I have a bunch of I know. It was a lot. Cool stuff. It'll be a, a lot of fun. If you want to bring the kitties, come on down. Uh, we're going to be there from 11 to 2 at the radio station on Saturday. Uh, we're we're going to have a catered barbecue and, and lots of giveaways. Obviously, we're going to have product there if you want to do business. Uh, it, it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be, it, yeah. it really is. It's going to be a lot of fun. I want to see everybody there, whether you've done business with us or not, come on down. We're going to have a, you know, a lot of great things coming. So we're not only are we uh, having the, the meet and the greet, we're getting ready to add a brand new show uh, to, to KHNC in Colorado. We're also going to have a, a physical location uh, at the radio station and stuff. Remember, the radio station used to be a bank building. And uh, we've got the big bank vault that's all still in there, and and uh, you'll be able to do business with us up there now. You won't have to, uh, if you want to, pick up product and things of that nature and not pay for shipping. We're going to have it all set up for you. That's right. It's going to be great. Jason will be there. Jason will be there, and Brian's going to be there. We're, we, we've got our team put together, uh, and we're just really, really excited. A huge shout-out. Uh, to Sharon and Michael and Cody, they I got to tell you right now, just been fantastic, uh, and we're just uh, probably something. No, let's face it, we probably should have done this 20 years ago, uh, but we're a little slow here. We're, we've never claimed to be the smartest people in the world, uh, but we hopefully will see all of you up there on Saturday uh, from 11 to 2. Uh, and, and again, today's probably the last day. So if you're if you want to sell, you know what. Uh, cases of Silver Eagles or bags of junk, uh, call me today uh, and let me know. Uh, same thing, if you're, if you're expecting to, to make a big purchase, give us a call. We'll try to have everything ready uh, and make it as easy as possible for you. Our toll-free number, 800-951-0592. The website at allamericangold.com. we got all the social media out there, uh, the podcast, the Apple Tunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, we got it all out there. Uh, the metals plans, IRAs. Wendy said, when's the last time you talked about IRAs? If you want to do a physical gold and silver IRA, give us a call. You know, if you're one of those people where, hey, I was fortunate enough to, to reap the benefits of the 40% stock return last year and realize, hey, that's probably over and want to shift it into gold and silver, uh, give us a call, uh, and we'll talk you through it and and tell you how it works and give you all the information you may need uh, to do that. A lot of things going on. If you haven't noticed, huge move, huge move in gold and silver. You shouldn't be surprised. Listen, I told you last week the bottom was in. I even remember Eric came in and, and bought and wanted you to know uh, there, there's a lot of talk now about where where the dollar is headed. Obviously, what's going on with, with the tariffs. The Treasury Secretary had to testify again today about what's going on with the budget deficits. Uh, we had some Federal Reserve speak, but uh, right now gold's up 20 bucks at 1340 silver. So, I mean, you know, I love to hate it, but I got to tell you right now, it is probably uh, going to have the best year of all the metals. I think really outside of maybe uh, palladium, I think platinum is going to have a decent year. Uh, but silver is probably going to have the best year of them all, at least on a percentage basis. Silver's up 50 cents right now, uh, $16.85. Uh, 
the Dow's down 100 points. It was up 300 yesterday, so uh, down 100 today. You know, again, it is now uh, volatility everywhere, and you're seeing every day something changes that affects uh, not only the markets, but obviously all of the easy money, at least in the debt markets, has been made. And now, uh, you, really, I, you know, you almost need perfection now. Right, we 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 somehow need to be able to raise rates without the yield on the bond market getting too high. By the way, why is gold and silver moving today? You're not going to find it anywhere. You're not going to find it on the idiot box, and you're not even well. You could find it on the web. It'd be real, real hard. But I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. And once again, it all had to do with what was going on in the United States and their ability to sell all of this debt. There was another hemorrhage in the bond market. Uh, they're trying to cover it up. They don't want you to know about it. And it was at the, one of the shorter uh, issuances. This was a three-month issuance, which is one of the most popular, because that way, you know what, you, you kind of feel a lot of these places feel like, hey, I, I, the dollar can't move too much, and I've only got to hold it for 90 days, uh, but I'll bring you up to speed on what happened after the break. Uh, just, put, just know this, the United States is now paying the highest price in nine years to sell debt to the rest of the world. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800-951-0592. Listen, we, we just got an alert, and, and and this has gone out to everybody. So this may be one of those things where uh, it sells out very, very quickly. Uh, but MS, Mint State 63 St. Gaudens. So the Mint State 63 Saints, these are PCGS and NGC grade. Uh, right now, as if you're just joining us again, gold is up $20 right now. Uh, and a regular ungraded, what all we call the raw St. Gaudens, which we handle, beautiful material is uh, at $1,415. Right now, they've just made available 200, 200 MS-63 $20 Saints. They're going to be $5 less than the young grade. So you're going to go up eight grades and save five bucks a coin. MS-63 Saints. At fourteen hundred and ten dollars, uh, <laughs> which puts that what seventy dollars over a spot. That is absolutely unheard of. Uh, MS sixty three Saints. They they put this out to everybody in the country. Uh, there was two hundred of them available. MS sixty three Saints, less than an ungraded Saint. At fourteen hundred and ten dollars this morning, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. That is the toll free number. And just uh, again, things that we've never seen before are happening. Uh, last night, the three month Treasury bill rose to the highest levels in over nine years. And the six-month bill also hit another high of over nine years. The Treasury, this and it's never-ending, $51 billion of three-month bills. Think about it. Every three months, right, they're rolling over hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, the rate on a three-month bill, one66 up from 1.64, that's a huge move in a week. Another $45 billion in six-month bills, all the way up to 183. And, and again, this is just going to put more and more pressure. We're starting to see it now. 
uh, the pressures coming up, the Treasury Secretary having to testify today about what's happening in the market. Uh, the U.S. Treasury au- auction just under a hundred billion dollars of three and six month bills. Uh, the highest, by the way, the three month, and here's where the scary part got all the way to one six nine. So it added almost a half of a percentage point uh, in just over a week. It is the highest level since September of 2008. Uh, the six month bill hit a high of one nine. Uh, interest rates have been increasing in week, recent weeks, and the Federal Reserve, uh, uh, the one-year Treasury bill, a popular index for making changes in adjustable rate mortgages. So all of you that have adjustable rate mortgages, that also shot up after the three- and six-month bill auction. And listen, this is just going to be something where, like I said, it's not going to be in the headlines. They don't want to you to really know about what's happening. But every single week, it's nonstop, week after week after week, they've got to auction off hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. You know, we, we heard about the one day where they had to do $179 billion, a new all-time record high in a single day, but it doesn't end. And now the rates are starting to move, so that's really what started it all. Uh, they, you know, they'll say, oh, well, you know, the tariff stuff's dying down, or, or hey, North Korea says they want to talk, and, and but that's not real, right? That's the, the distraction that they want you to believe. Uh, and then this one came in later. Now, gold was already up about 14 or $15. This tacked on another five new orders. Uh, for U.S. made goods fell by the largest amount in over six months. And this was a January number. So we have all this survey data stuff. And this is a big problem, right? Because they tout the survey stuff. Oh, uh, manufacturing index is at an all-time high. Consumer confidence is at this. And small businesses that that. It's just survey. These are actual numbers. Factory goods fell 1.4%. Uh, then when you stripped out commercial aircraft, it was still down uh, three-tenths of a percent. It's the second straight monthly decline uh, in factory orders. The the uh, orders for non-defense capital goods, excluding aircraft, like I said, fell three-tenths in January, fell two-tenths uh, in, Decem- in December. Uh, it was the first back-to-back drop in factory orders since May 2016. So you tell me, you don't think we need these tariffs? You bet we do. Shipments of core capital goods, which are used to calculate business equipment spending. So here we had the big tax cuts, and right, business is going to, we're going to spend all this money. Slip. One tenth of a percent in January, so at least in I know, I know, I know. Hey, they didn't pass it till December, so you know it's only the first month. Uh, but remember, they were very quick. Remember, they were rolling. They rolled down all. Of, they had like a rolodex of companies that was giving you all of this money. And of course, I was telling you what they were really doing, right? All-time record high stock buybacks uh, were in January. But they didn't spend any money. Actual spending by businesses actually fell one-tenth of a percent. And I know it's still worth let, let, Let's hope it gets better. It needs to get better. Uh, Trump was out talking about tariffs again, saying, listen, we're not going to make any deals. We're not going to give an exception to our buddies. You know, you're ripping us off. You're going to pay for it. Uh, Goldman Sachs coming out, calling them draconian. You know, I, I want to bring this point up. Do you know how the gov- the federal government used to get all of its revenue? I'm just, you know, and I know nobody talks about it enough, but when the United States government first started, it was all funded. It wasn't funded by the taxpayer. Matter of fact, there wasn't a taxpayer. <laughs> hey, we didn't, the federal government didn't do it that way. They got it all from tariffs. Yeah. 
Wouldn't that be something? You know what? I'll tell you right now. Hey, wouldn't it be great if, if the tax rate went to zero? Right? We just got all of it. Hey, you know what? You want to you wanna sell here in the United States, but you don't want to build it here in the United States? Hey, you got to pay a tariff. We'll use that to fund the government. Of course. Let's face it, I mean, that's probably unrealistic today uh, because we don't live in a free society anymore, right? We, we live in a society uh, where we, we give government handouts. But I do love it how we, I think we're kind of getting into this area of we want it back. Did you see the study? And I know that, that I hammer the Uber and Lyft. And I listen, and I want to be clear, I do not hammer the people that are doing the driving those guys you know what every one of those people you know what be nice to your uber and lyft drivers because the 99 probably percent of them are supplementing their income right they're saying you know what i don't want to be on food stamps and i don't want to be on government assistance so i'm using my car like a taxi mit did a study and when you factor in, because you don't factor in everything, right? You know, you, you know. okay, yeah, I had to fill it up with gas and, and that kind of But you don't factor in, and it's hard, because you don't factor in the wear and the tear on the car. But, you know, think about it. You're probably, if you were really working the Uber Lyft thing, you're probably putting 50,000, 60,000 miles on the car easy. So that's $1,000 worth of tires you didn't factor in, and oil changes, and brakes, and shocks, and this, and that. Uh, it works out to, I think they said $3.37 an hour. And this is this is what they're praising, right? Think about this. i, I got to watch Goldman Sachs try to tell you how draconian these, these tariffs are and that it's going to be bad for the United States and it's going to make things cost more. Yep, things are going to cost more. But what is the choice? Either things cost more, right, or more and more people are going to end up on the rolls of the government. How did we get to 40-some-odd million people on food? Listen, we've been in a quote-unquote recovery. Okay? Not my word. Okay? This is what you would hear the elected officials tell you. This is what you hear the Federal Reserve tell you. This is what you hear the Treasury Secretary. Better everybody, you turn on the idiot box, they tell you. We've been in this recovery for, what, nine years? Alleged recovery, nine years. And there's still 42 million people on food stamps. And yes, the vast majority of them have jobs. Before NAFTA and GATT, that number was less than 20. It was less than half, it was about a third about, you know, probably right around 15 million people or so before, and that, that may, may have only been 12. Now we got 42. After nine straight years of alleged growth, the fact that there's, oh, we're at full and, and not only nine straight years, and full employment. How does that math work? How did it happen? And the answer is so simple. We took away good jobs, and we replaced them with crappy ones. It's, it's just that simple. <laughs> Waiters and waitresses and bartenders and, and bus boys, right, Uber and Lyft drivers, and listen, they're, they're, they're breaking their butts out there. Any real job that paid money, big business, wanted it to go away. And you know why? Because they wanted it to go away to make the stock price go up. That was really the trade-off. You know, when you think about what is happening now, oh, big news, uh, by the way, the Dow is now down 150. Uh, Gary Cohen is saying that he is going to resign as economic advisor over the tariffs. Gary Cohen, just so you know, he's the uh, the head economics of the Trump administration, a Goldman Sachs guy. He, he's a guy that, that during the time, you know, and, and and I don't want to give this guy too much credit, but I'm sure he was right there lobbying for all the NAFTAs and the gas back when he was at Goldman Sachs. 
and and now uh, word is uh, that he may be resigning, and and of course, again, Wall Street paying a lot of attention because here's the reality: is they got rich by making American workers poor. I mean, that's really it's really that simple. Would you rather have? Uh, the Dow, I don't know, at 14,000 and only 10 million people on food stamps? Would you rather have the Dow at 14, uh, 14,000, maybe it's 10,000, and we're not running $1.5 trillion budget deficits, right? we're not running $2 trillion budget deficits, wouldn't you rather have that? Well, we may. We may find out. Uh, we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, as And, again, this is just breaking news. I don't know that it, it actually happened or not, but I was told if he did, then we'll have to see that there could be a very, very, very violent reaction uh, on Wall Street. Uh, and I really don't know why. You know, again, it's kind of like, remember Brexit, right? Now, how about it was going to kill the United Kingdom and kill England? Yeah. That hasn't happened either. Listen, MS-63 states, if Gary Cohen's resigning, it's going to be a great day to buy. They're 1410 bucks at 800-951-0592. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be right back. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily commentary continuing the conservative pro-family legacy of Phyllis Schlafly. Now, here's the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. President Trump proved the pundits wrong once again with his victory against the first government shutdown of his presidency in January. Nearly all political experts pompously declared that Republicans cannot win in a shutdown, and yet Trump did exactly that. Not only was this a clear victory for Republicans, but Trump seemingly won it in a first-round knockout. Democrats were bewildered by how they had to capitulate to avoid a disaster for their party. So how did Donald Trump manage this long overdue victory? He defined the issue and he stuck with it, astutely declining to discuss DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, with the Democrats until the government was reopened. In so doing, he taught his fellow Republicans a great deal about how to negotiate with the Democrats in the future. Trump showed that he is not a Republican in the mold of the first President Bush, who infamously declared to read his lips and no new taxes before breaking that pledge when Democrats pressured him. Likewise, Trump is not like Republican leaders in Congress either, many of whom have been trying to appease liberals on DACA and other issues for years. The benefits of President Trump's forceful leadership on the January shutdown extend far beyond immigration. President Trump seems to have finally ended the stranglehold that liberals have maintained over Republicans by holding the government hostage to a shutdown unless the GOP caves in. Instead, it was the Democrats who completely caved in by ending the shutdown, and even the liberal media had to admit their very deserving defeat. Many reasons are still discussed as to why the Democrats lost this time when they have such a long history of winning on government shutdowns. But much of that post-game analysis misses the point. The real cause of this massive Democrat political blunder can be summed up in just four words. They underestimated Donald Trump. By now, this is not a mistake that political experts should still be making. This businessman turned president has brought a take-no-prisoners approach that is a welcome breath of fresh air in the stale, business-as-usual climate of our federal government. This has been the Phyllis Schlafly Report from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles. As President Trump fulfills his campaign promises, his accomplishments on trade, immigration, the economy, and protecting the unborn should be celebrated, not ignored or diminished. To track these victories, go to phyllisschlafly.com and find out what's next for the Trump presidency at phyllisschlafly.com. Thanks for listening to the Phyllis Schlafly Report. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Take the time. I know. I get it. Right? You're not sure. You're like, well, but things are better. Things are improving. I, I don't need to, to get it. Yes, you do. The dollar in free fall this morning down over 
50 basis points uh, back below 90, 89, 50, and falling. Uh, it's a debt problem. It's always been a debt problem. We have a huge problem of, of mispriced equities. You know what? Think about it. They've been mispriced in equities for nine years. Well, actually, a little longer, about about 11 years. We've had, quote, unquote, nine years of economic recovery, and yet we've never been poor. Remember yesterday, 75% of, of millennials are receiving assistance from their parents? It's an incredible number. 25% who actually work 35 hours a week or more need help from mom and dad. How about Ron Paul? Boy, he was out today. Uh, Ron Paul saying Wall Street is missing the big picture. I think they're starting to get it. The real trouble stems from Federal Reserve policy and easy money, and I couldn't agree more. If the Fed continues on the things, if the Fed continues on the things that they are sort of planning on doing, it's going to be a calamity. And I, I actually, it's unavoidable. And, and and I know you don't get it yet. Believe me now and trust me later. They just Fox, Fox, okay, the, you know, the Republican-loving Fox, they did a new study. They've now, they're getting closer to me. They've now said the debt's going to go up $16 trillion in the next 10 years. I already told you it's $20 trillion, and I, and I think 20 may be light. I think we have a greater distortion and a financial danger sitting out there bigger than ever before. We know that's a fact. They fixed the debt problem by mispricing that debt and then doubling it. Now they're trying to, to get to a, a, a more realistic price. Well, the debt doubles again, and now what we're finding out is interest rates are rising, and especially the short end of this curve, the three-month, the six-month, the one-year, the two-year, the five-year, the seven-year. I saw the seven-year this morning within 20 basis points of the 10-year, you know, that inversion of the yield curve, which, as far as I know, every time it's happened, recession has come, and I hope it doesn't. They said that the Federal Reserve, this was Ron Paul this morning, he was actually on the idiot box, that the Federal Reserve has rigged the economy ranging from keeping interest rates far too low for far too long, all the rounds of quantitative easing, the timing and selling its financial crisis era assets, a growing budget deficit. Everything is just very burdened with debt, and there's no stopping it. And, and that's really the problem, right? There's no way out here. He said that uh, a correction is inevitable, and, and really, when you think about it, it, it it's probably, I, I'm hoping, because of what Trump is doing, that it's not going to be that bad, right? I'm hoping that it's, hey, 10, 20 percent. Ron Paul, this morning, the correction's going to be huge. I don't think anybody can predict but I think the correction that we had in 08, 09 wasn't allowed to really go its course and restore the sensibility to the market. And I, and I just remember as I was reading that, what Eric was saying about how, hey, you notice how it never retested? It got down to, what, 6,600, I'm talking about the Dow, it, it then the Fed announced all the the crazy quantitative easing policies uh, and never retested. Ron Paul kind of making mention of that. Hey, you know what? They went in, they manipulated, they never let it get cleaned out. And usually throughout history, that doesn't end well. I don't know. 
Uh, this just out, Steve Mnuchin, he's our Treasury Secretary. Uh, he was testifying in front of Congress today, asserted that the U.S. is not provoking a global trade war, but instead wants its companies to get equal treatment in other countries, uh, saying that he agrees with the tariffs, and he said that President Trump has been very clear. We want to make sure U.S. companies have the same ability to do business in China as Chinese companies have over here. And again, we started with trade or tariffs that at least as far as I know, and I don't know, uh, but it doesn't appear that they even affected China. We'll have to wait and see, right? Because we don't know, is the Canadian iron ore, the Canadian steel, the Canadian aluminum, the Mexican steel, the Mexican aluminum, are those from Chinese-owned companies? I don't know. Uh, but he was saying that uh, the priority at the moment is to renegotiate NAFTA and to focus on our trade relationship with China and having fair and balanced trade. And I'm going to say this. Why is that a horrible thing? Right? <laughs> why is it? Go ahead. Goldman Sachs, it's draconian, it's horrible, how dare they? Really? We want fair trade? Apparently, what free trade meant, and you know it was something that, that you go back to the NAFTA and GATT and we kind of told you this was really what they meant. What free trade really meant was firing the workers from the most expensive countries and replacing them with workers from the least expensive countries. Period. That's what it meant. So the one place where they got fired was right here. Now all of a sudden we may decide, hey, you know what, maybe it's a good idea we bring these jobs back, and it's a horrible idea. <laughs> It's terrible. We don't want that. You don't want that, right? They're out there trying, oh, my God, you know how much things are going to cost? And you know what? Unfortunately, I do. And it's, you don't, but I do. It's going to be a, an incredibly expensive atmosphere of, of inflation that's going to run. But it's already here. We have stagflation anyway. Uh, you know what? I'll talk a little bit about that next. Picture Radio News Hour. MS-63 Saints, while they're still available, $14.10, $5 less, eight grades higher for $5 less. Welcome back, 800 951 The Dow's down 150 points. Uh, gold's up 19 at 13.39. Silver, 45 cents. Uh, Sixteen dollars in eighty cents. A really, really good article uh, out of uh, uh, it's called Common Dreams is is the website. This was uh, this was actually an article that was published last year uh, in October, and they talk about poverty. And there's a big and there's a big study out today. It was a big headline on CNBC. Forty two percent of people getting ready to retire have less than ten grand. And when you you know when you get to a hundred thousand or less, you're pretty much in poverty at that point if you're seventy years old. And and it's an incredible number. But one of the things that this article pointed out is the formula for poverty. They haven't changed. Now, it's a formula from the 60s, right? Uh, Lyndon Johnson. I remember when food stamps first came about. Listen, food stamps have only been around since the late 60s. How did we end up with, what, one out of six, one out of six Americans now have to have it? But the formula for food stamps hasn't changed. See, the formula was when food expenses were a much bigger part of the family budget. 
it hasn't kept up with other major expenses, which is why a millennial working full-time seemingly still needs help from mommy and daddy. Since 1980, food costs have gone up 100%. Now, again, this is their number. Uh, I, I'll tell you, 1980, I'm 10 years old. Okay, We had started building a log cabin, me and my five friends. And this is something, you know, when you lived in, in upstate New York, you could do stuff like this. Uh, today, if we were doing it, they would call the police, uh, you know, because we were, had uh, six, six kids. We're riding our bikes with axes and hatchets and uh, lighter fluid. But a candy bar was like 25 cents. It's now a dollar seventy nine. And I only can, you know, I'm doing the kid thing here, right? A pack of baseball cards. They were fifteen cents, you know, and they had the little gum in it, right? Today, baseball cards, if you can find them, they're locked up in a machine. <laughs> Cause there's so much. They're like four and five dollars a pack. But anyway, food costs are up a hundred percent. Housing is up. 250%. Health care's up 500%. College tuition is up 1,000%. <laughs> if the same basic methodology developed in the early 1960s was applied today, the poverty threshold would be three times higher. The median household income in the United States was $59,000. Okay, that's median, so it's not an average. But uh, the Economic Policy of Institute calculated uh, a median budget for a two-parent, two-child family is sixty three thousand seven forty one? <laughs> Whoops! According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, median household uh, expenses in twenty fourteen was thirty six thousand eight hundred dollars. They said income was about fifty four thousand. Of course, that doesn't really include a whole lot for anything else because by the time you paid your taxes uh, and, and actually had to, uh, you know, get car insurance and all the other stuff, uh, really doesn't bode well for anybody. For the middle third of households, okay, so, you know, middle class people, which reaches actually well into the middle class, only six thousand dollars remained for building your wealth so think about this if you budgeted to the penny you know it and, and didn't overspend uh and go to the go go to a movie uh and eat out and do all any of those other things oh i'm sorry that was before taxes whoops so there really wasn't anything left over. So according to the study, in the past 20 years, median household expenses has increased by 25 to 30 percent while wages have stagnated. And we did this yesterday. So this is government's own data. People the age of 18 to 34 are earning 20 percent less. The problem is expenses are up 30%. Americans spend more than they earn, not on frivolous extras, but on essential needs. So there you have it. This is how they've lied and manipulated, and now anybody that wants to bring good-paying jobs back is a complete idiot and a moron. Right? Just ask and the people that took the jobs away from us to begin with. Yeah. How do you think that's going to work out? 800 951 
800-529-0592. Final segment on a Tuesday coming up. Final segment, 800-951-0592. Gold's up 19, 13, 39. Silver is approaching here 50 cents here, $16.81. And, and I, you know, I've said all you, listen, gold's going to have a great year. Silver is going to have, silver is going to just outperform. Uh, I think you're seeing all these shorts uh, that have piled up, record high short positions in silver, uh, and you're starting to see those get taken out. Uh, and I think your the silver is going to outperform. I've been saying it all year. Uh, so make sure when you're putting some gold away, take the time, put some silver away. I know I'm not a huge silver fan, but it, it's hard to ignore right now. Uh, still at over 79 ounces of silver for an ounce of gold. So it's come, you know, it got to about 81. Now it's you know just under 80, uh, starting to come back. But silver's got a long way to go. Uh, U.S. Silver Eagles today at 4:05 a roll. I still I got some rolls of quarters still at 1:35. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of that, uh, do so. But the deal of the day, without a shadow of a doubt, again, and and we're starting to see this. Listen, I'll sell graded coins. I will. We 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 haven't done graded coins. You know what? Eric stopped selling them in like 04. 0405 because they the premiums they just got too expensive. But if I can tell you, I can sell you a Mint State 63 Saint Gordon, which is eight grades higher than our normal regular ungraded Saint, and sell it to you for five bucks less. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Fourteen hundred and ten bucks. These are PCGS and NGC grades. If you've never done business with us, I know it could be scary. Listen, we've been here 22 years, complaint-free. You just need to call us up. You call the 800 number. Wendy's going to answer. And all you need to tell her is, Wendy, I'd like the special. Because right? we don't do bait and switch. We don't advertise something and then tell you not to buy it. We want you to buy the special. She's just going to ask you how many would you like, and you tell her. One, five, ten, however many it is. Then once you pay for it, we ship the product to you, registered, insured, U.S. mail. It's just that simple. If you want to use a credit card, you can. We take all four, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express. you got to add $15 a coin uh, for, for the special today, MS. 63 and these are saints. MS 63 saints. Uh, Fourteen hundred and ten dollars. I have no idea uh, when they'll be gone. This is something that was advertised to everybody in the country. All right, so I just got an update uh, right on cue here. So there's 80 still left, uh, and again, this is to everybody in the country. So my guess is that uh, you know, try us at the end of the day if the show repeats. I just don't know. Uh, when they'll be out, MS 63 Saints at fourteen hundred and ten dollars eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And just remember, Johnstown will be up there Saturday for the big meet and greet, the barbecue, the giveaways. Uh, all the information will be up on our website. It'll be up there all week. So if you don't know where the station is. Go to allamericangold.com. You'll find it there. Hey, everyone, take care. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. We'll see what tomorrow brings.